I'm Sean Fennessy. I'm Amanda Dobbin. And this is the Big Picture Conversation Show about fall festival season. It is upon us. I have just returned from the Telluride Film Festival. What film festival did you arrive from, Amanda? Uh, the one on my couch. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. I did. I had some film adventures this mm-hmm. weekend. I went to the Academy Museum. Oh, fun. With my two and a half year old son to see uh, Monsters, Inc. It was honestly really great. They do like special calm mornings for kids. We did crafts before. Okay. They don't. They keep the volume at a level that won't scare a two and a half year old. Was this your first time seeing the film Monsters Inc? No, okay. I saw it when it came out. Oh, okay. Right, because it's like early two thousand. I don't know. So I would have. Have you never seen Monsters? No, Inc.? of course I have. <laughs> okay. I was like, come on. But there, there um, are many animated. We films also you've not like. Seen. By the way, we watched forty five minutes and then it was time to leave. Okay. But it okay. was it was a very sweet program that the Academy did. And then, can I just share like a really heartbreaking thing? I told you this. I texted you in real time. But oh yeah. As we were leaving, um, Knox also really likes The Wizard of Oz. And so I made a huge parenting error, which is without checking, I told him that we could go see Dorothy's Red Slippers. And then we asked some very kind people at the museum where we could find Dorothy's slippers. And they looked very stricken. And they were like, I'm so sorry, but it's between exhibits. And so they're not on display right now. And then my child did like the full face melt, sad cry, like not the fake one, you know, but the real one where I like start small and then the things start going down. And he was just sobbing in my arms, just being like, Dorothy's shoes, Dorothy's shoes. I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been there. So I experienced the highs and the lows of cinema this weekend. Well, you were participating in the Academy game in a way, helping, helping Ampus. I also looked at a tremendous number of photos of hot people on the Venice red carpet. We can talk about that. We'll yeah. talk a little bit about Venice. Obviously, neither of us were there this year, but there were a number of films that premiered there that are going to be the subject of, on this show over the next few months. Telluride was amazing. It was not the most amazing slate, I would say, that yeah. I've seen in Telluride history. And some of my fears, some of my little uh, my angst pre-festival, mm-hmm. I think were more or less met by the truth of the lineup, which was okay. The festival itself, as usual... Greatest place on earth. You communed with the mountains. Uh, I not really. I didn't really touch any mountains. <laughs> I, I stood between the mountains. You know, the entire festival takes place in a slot canyon. Uh, but a man, I met so many people, so many listeners of the show, so many young listeners of the show, so many young listeners of the show who said they came to the festival because they've heard me talk about it on the show. That's really nice. Which was amazing. I'm, I'm not talking like two, three, like 12, 13, 14 people were like, I'm here because I heard you talk about it, which is very flattering, but also just really cool. And, you know, Telluride is usually a pretty old festival. And I felt like I saw a ton of young people there. Plus the student symposium. I met a ton of students there. Just the greatest. Honestly, they do such a cool job. Honestly, I got treated like gold at this point. It's really, really nice. I love it there. Um, There were some really great films. I'll talk about everything that I saw. You can press me on what you Mm -hmm. think what I'm overheated about, what I'm underheated about. I have about. opinions about all of that. Okay. I also, did you see that I put some I did. superlatives, some awards that you have I've to prepared. give it at the end? Okay, I've prepared good. for, Thank you for so your much. superlatives. Great questions. Yeah. Thank you. Um, should we start at the top with the big winner of the festival? Yeah. So this is a film that we've both seen. Yes. Are we allowed to share? I think so. The film already played Can right. and Telluride it now. It won the Palm Door. It won the Palm Door. <laughs> the movie is Anora. Anora, well, one, it felt like a Telluride this year. It felt like there were more people there. I don't really know how to say it. They say that they sold the same number of tickets that they always sell, same mm-hmm. number of patron passes, same number of all the things. That they. It just felt more crowded. Some of that might have just been, you know, we're out of COVID and the right. strikes. And, you know, last year was a little bit of a smaller festival over a longer period of time. But every screening of Anora, based on people that I talked to, was mobbed. People were being turned away left and right. And I didn't talk to a single person that saw it there that did not like it. We have not talked about this movie yet on the show. It's mm-hmm. not coming out until October. I was thinking we should consider trying to pre-tape our episode yeah. because it is kind of the movie of the year and we both had a chance to see it. But this is Sean Baker's new movie starring Mikey Madison about a stripper, dancer, sex worker who meets a young, the son of a Russian oligarch and magic and terror ensues. Mm-hmm. And comedy. Very funny, very fun, very energetic movie. I was very curious about whether or not the older patrons right. were going to click with the movie. I think that they did in part because the movie, when it starts, it doesn't really pull any punches. It's like, this is what kind of movie this is. <laughs> we're in a strip club. And uh, I didn't go to see it at the festival because I'd already seen it, but I heard no walkouts, no grumbling. Like, people seem to really, really vibe with it. Are you surprised to hear that based on what it is? 
I remember sitting in the room watching it and being like, I wonder how this level of nudity and sex will go over with Academy of Voters. And then I remembered that Poor Things was literally last year. And obviously, Poor Things is more stylized and has it's like wrapped up in costume drama, which mm-hmm. is going to make a certain type of voter feel better. Mm-hmm. And I think if, if the Academy can accept Poor Things and is weirded out by Enora, that reflects very poorly on the Academy. But there's space for it. Like, they, you know, yeah, I mean, we're all grown-ups. I, it, it felt like coming out of this festival, not only is there space for it, but it feels like a front runner, right? It feels like yeah. there's not a lot of movies that people are agreeing on right now. I can't recall a less settled Best Picture race, which maybe we'll talk about later. But That's if you true. just think back, when I got back from Telluride and you got back from Venice last year, we had seen, to that point, Barbie Oppenheimer, The Holdovers, The Zone of Interest, Maestro, those were all nominated for Best Picture. Mm-hmm. I think there was there were a few more, too, that we had seen at that point. Poor Things. Poor Things as well. I saw at Telluride. And I saw at Venice. Had we really seen The Holdovers yet? Yeah, I saw you The Holdovers had, at Telluride. Had. Oh, that's right. And yeah. I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, it felt like it, maybe the slate wasn't settled. Past but we, Lives? Past Lives we'd already seen, which came out much earlier in the year. So, you know, seven, eight, yeah. nine of the movies that were going to be on the list we'd already seen. This year, I had multiple conversations with people trying to game out what's going to be there. Mm -hmm. And there are some people who feel really strongly that, you know, Dune Part 2 is locked in there. Like, maybe Challengers can make a comeback. We hadn't seen a couple of other movies that played at Venice yet. But this is the one movie now that everyone's like, this is great. This is a great film. And I don't want to say anything else. We'll talk more about it on the show in the future. But um, it was agreed upon. This is the one festival movie. The other one that's lurking is Sing Sing, which... Yes. Is just still in limited. Like, what are we doing? I have not understood the release. What are we doing? I talked to a bunch of people about that this weekend, too. (laughs) I was like, so you guys put it in 100 theaters, then 200 theaters, then 300 theaters, then 200 theaters, and 100 theaters, and it's gone? Like, what was was that move? I don't understand. Everybody I know who's seen it really likes it. So it's been a very odd rollout for that one. I mean, maybe they're trying to do sort of like the early past lives hype and then hold it and bring it back closer. I think to that was the, the intention, awards. but it didn't really click in that way, which is a bit but strange. It wasn't as, it w- wasn't opened as widely as past. It lives. wasn't, it wasn't anyway. Um, the only other movie that I would say I think was a winner, even though I was, I liked it, but was slightly more mixed on it than many mm-hmm. people I talked to was Amelia Perez, which right. was also at Cannes. This is Jacques Audiard's new movie. It is it, boy. It's a lot of movie. It's it, 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 just. I mean, the description, just like the tagline, is a yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a trans coming of age story. It's a musical. Right. It's a story about the desaparecidos in Mexico. It's an action movie. It's a family drama. It is, man. It's a lot. Um, Carla Gascon, Selena Gomez, and Zoe Saldana are the stars of the movie. For me. Zoe Saldana, I thought was absolutely amazing. And it was a real, like, I didn't know she could do this. She's singing, dancing, mm-hmm. rapping, giving a genuine That's heartfelt because you performance. Haven't seen center stage in many years, but anyway. That's a really good point. Just, and it, it's, a, it's like I, the whole time I was watching the movie, which again, like, I like Audiard, but I often think he, he like tries to make three movies at the same time mm-hmm. and never chooses which one it ultimately is. And I felt that way a little bit about Amelia Perez. But watching Zoe Saldana, I was like, what? Why? Where has she been? Like, I, I know she's been Gamora and she's been an avatar. Well, that's literally your know, answer is that I she's know. been like in a tank with, you know, all the dots. I know. And I, I, for years and years. I'm sure that was incredibly lucrative and people love her because of those movies. But man, she's so fucking talented. And I really was taken with her in this movie. Did you go to the volleyball game where Selena Gomez performed the na- performed the national anthem? <laughs> no, I heard all about it. It was <laughs> the talk of the town. I wish I was there. Um, it's incredible campaigning. Yeah, she they w- made a bunch of signs and then she just showed up. <laughs> she did. Selena Gomez, I would say, was a little out of her league in this movie relative well, to the other two stars. But like, listen, all the value starts now. You yes, know, yes. she's pulling stunts. Lots of rumors about whether or not she's engaged. You know, the ring will be on and off for the next four months. <laughs> she's, people are invested. She's going to get a lot of people to watch yeah, this film. Yeah, exactly. Which is coming out in November on Netflix and is certainly audacious, like a lot of movies here. And the, uh, the audacious movies were the ones that usually didn't work for me. Ultimately, at the festival, I mm-hmm. thought actually some of the more conventional stuff, with one exception, was okay. the stuff that I liked okay, the best. Okay, old man. I, it, I did feel a bit like I was getting on in years. I was like, this is a real movie. Not some <laughs> of this other claptrap that they're trying out here in the world. Um <laughs> that's I think that's ultimately just the testimony to the to the slate itself the and lineup. maybe not to my taste. My favorite movie that I saw yeah was the was 
very audacious. Easily the boldest movie that I saw this year, which is Nickel Boys. Yeah. Which I saw on opening night. This is Ramel Ross's first scripted film. He directed Hale County, which was nominated for an Oscar some years ago. Um, it's adapted from a Colson Whitehead novel. It's coming out in November from Amazon. It stars uh, Ethan Harris, Brandon Wilson, Ingenue Ellis Taylor. I'm, I'm sure you read a bit about it. I did. And then I was like, I don't want to read too much because I want to go in. I also, it's adapted from a Colson Whitehead novel that I have not read. So mm-hmm. I'm like, should I read the book first? I almost read it. To be able to understand. I, I was holding it in my hand yeah. in the bookstore the day, like the day I arrived at the festival. Right. And I was like, should I just like jump into this and read a hundred pages tonight and see? Right. Because I wanted to get my bearings with it. I'm glad I did it and didn't do that, but the people who because because the people who read it seem to be a little bit frustrated. That's always the case. Yeah. So the so the answer and ultimately is I think I will probably see the try to know as little as possible, see the film and then read the book because you still want to I understand that it is like a major work of adaptation. Yes, it's which a, is cool. It's very um I don't I mean I can't compare it to the book because I haven't yeah, read yeah, it, yeah. but the it's a very form-breaking film, and you can see a filmmaker who is a documentarian applying the skills and the tools that he learned in that format into this movie. You know, the thing that to, to note is that it's a movie that is 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 seen from the first-person perspective. So the camera is literal is as if it is the head of the lead character in the film, and then some things evolve and it it shifts and changes and it has a kind of dynamism, but it is very alienating. And I know a lot of people who really struggled with this movie, especially the first hour of this movie. Ultimately, it is easily the movie that has stuck to my ribs the most, that Mm -hmm. I have thought about the most, that I have tried to unpack the most. It is a very literary adaptation of a literary book. And so there is metaphor and reaching imagery that is meant to compel you to think about things well beyond just the characters and the setting of the movie. It's very bold. I, I, I don't think mainstream audiences will connect with it, even though it is very profound. Um, But it immediately just made me want to see 10 more Ramel Ross movies. Um, I, the, anybody who is like, I really like challenging movies likes this movie. Okay. Anybody who's like, I want to be entertained does not like this movie. Okay, great. So, I mean, that's, this will be an interesting challenge for you. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> well, yeah, I find that you are often because in the middle ground of that. Successful challenging movies. Mm-hmm. I really, when, when you land the plane, here's what I want. I want you to land the plane. Okay. You know, okay. I, I, Respect effort. We got to swing big. Art is about taking chances. And if you're asking for my time, you know, get it together before you ask for my time. I, I think a good companion to this movie is a somewhat more conventional version of not a similar story, but another black filmmaker, Malcolm Washington. He adapted the piano lesson, the August Wilson play. Um, this movie that, like, that played pretty well for me. It's not the mm-hmm. bold thing that Nickel Boys is, but it's just a kind of like a rock solid adaptation of a play that takes what could have been a very stagey sort of thing. The way that the last couple, couple of August, August Wilson, Wilson adaptations yes. have been very like, you know, two people stuck in a house yelling at each other. There is mm-hmm. plenty of that in the piano lesson because that's kind of the essence of a lot of Wilson's work. But I thought Malcolm Washington is. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fair um, to be fair. Uh, Malcolm Washington, who's Denzel's son. Yeah, it's, it's a bit, this is a big son of yes, this situation. Is, yes, John David Washington is also sure. in this film. He's one of the stars. Um, pretty impressive cast. You know, the movie is billed in an odd way. I wanted to tell you about this. Samuel L. Jackson is the first name in the credits. He's maybe the fourth or fifth lead of this movie. Sure, but he's Samuel L. Jackson. Yes, he's the most famous so person. So for him and for everyone else, you got to get that out in front. But curiously, Daniel Deadweiler, who people will remember from... Till Station Eleven, amazing actress. She has a with credit. It says with Daniel Deadweiler. Mm-hmm. I would argue she's the star of this movie. It sounds like the Netflix intention is to run her as a supporting actress. She's outstanding. Okay. Dynamite. The other standout from the movie, and I was stunned watching this, was Ray Fisher, who played Cyborg in the Justice League movies and then was entrenched in that kind of, oh, that of scandal course. around yeah, the film. Yeah, yeah. And he just took my breath away. I honestly was amazed. He was very funny, very touching. Um, and so I thought like getting a performance like that out of him spoke really well of Malcolm Washington and what he did. It's a good movie. It's not, you know, it's not no, I've been the best movie things. of the I'm, year, but it's I'm a good movie. I'm excited to see it. Um, okay, let's talk about the surprises. Right. So surprises meaning surprises to you, Sean Fennessy. Your yeah. expectations weren't. They move in both directions. Sure. Okay. I think both of these will appeal to you. 
I mean, the second one, I just absolutely can't wait. I look but forward I, to telling you about it. But I am very interested in September 5th as well, which is the first on your list. September 5th is a movie that very few people knew very much about. I had actually been invited to a pre-screening of this in August, and I was like, what is this? I don't know what this is. This isn't on my radar as a pundit. I don't need to care about this. And as soon as we got there, people were like, September 5, September 5, this is a very good movie. So it's a movie about the um, kidnapping hostage situation at the 1972 Olympic Games in Munich, told entirely through the perspective of ABC Sports, which was covering the event right. in real time. It stars Peter Sarsgaard, John Magaro, Ben Chaplin, and Leonie Benish, who you we may have seen in the teacher's lounge. And it's a process movie about journalism, journalism. you know, yeah. and in a kind of th thriller. I mean, as soon as you explain it and list the actors, I was like, okay, well, now I'm in. It's just really yeah. gripping, you yeah. know, and really well made. Tim Felbaum, who's not a filmmaker I'd really heard about much about. He's directed a couple of movies I've never seen. It's not the most complicated, ornate movie. If you compare a movie like this to a movie like Nickel Boys, they're operating in almost completely different forms. That's okay. We it have, is okay. We have room in the tent. It is. For lots of different types of movies. I agree. This is a movie that does not have distribution. I saw Scott Feinberg in The Hollywood Reporter yesterday. I thought very smartly wrote a piece that was like, if the right studio comes along and buys this, there's a there's kind of a low-key, best picture, yeah. best actor kind of campaign here. It's not going to change the world, but you know, it's also a film that is in some ways about the Israel-Palestine conflict, which I think will make it a very complicated movie True. to communicate about. Yes. I read some reviews of the movie that felt like it really only showed one perspective. Um, which is a fair criticism, I suppose. As a like a movie engagement, pretty slick and entertaining and emotional. And as two journalists or recovering journalists, sure. <laughs> pretty trenchant about the ethics of of an issue like this and what to show and not show on live right. television. Right, right, right. So, so I like the it. the best actor campaign would be for Sarsgaard. So I I think that they would push Sarsgaard, and I should say Peter Sarsgaard. And maybe I'm spoiling some of my superlatives, but he was extremely present at the Telluride Film wow. Festival. Okay, let's just put it put okay, it in hold, right. and we'll talk about that. Because uh, you know, I'm finally <laughs> caught up on Presumed Innocent. I just I got a I lot. I gotta of thoughts. say, he's the fucking man. He, he is. He's he, an absolute legend. He's awesome in this movie too. He has a scene where he just yells at some cops, and I was like, this is incredible <laughs> stuff. German cops. Uh, John McGarrow is really the lead of the movie. Okay, last scene in Past Lives. Yeah. one of my favorites. I don't think they're going to position it that way. But John Magaro effectively plays the sort of director of the day's coverage. And so right. he's the man in front of the control panel with the with the team telling them what to do. Peter Sarsgaard plays legendary ABC executive Rune Arledge, who oh, sort of made okay. his name with this and a number of other events. It's a cool movie. Like, P Peter Jennings is in this movie. Howard Cosell is in this movie. Okay. You know what I mean? It's Like the real people or the... Someone's playing Peter Jennings, okay. but then the real Howard Cosell, the real Jim McKay. Like, it's, okay. it's an interesting blend of the real and the lightly fictionalized. Okay. I'm, I'm I like forward it. to seeing Who knows? Yeah, Maybe yeah, yeah. it won't come out this year. I don't really yeah. know. But it was nice to sit down for something and be like, this wasn't on my list six for months sure. ago. The other surprise, which I saw I mean, candidly just for you. Yeah, good. I, I, but also like, shame on you that this is a surprise. <laughs> shame on you. This movie I had so much fun with. Uh, Martha. Yeah. The, the, the Netflix documentary about Martha Stewart. Directed by R.J. Cutler, who directed the September issue. Yes. And thus has a way with uh, wealthy white women of a certain age. He also directed the Billie Eilish documentary for Apple. Oh, that's right. And so he's got a knack for earning the trust, I think it's the mm -hmm. relative trust, of these complex people. Yeah. You know, I, I, I have produced like many documentaries like yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And they're hard and they often suck. And the, I would say one of the most important things, if not the most important thing in a, in a bio doc about a really famous person is the master interview, the main mm -hmm. talking head interview with the key subject. Sometimes they sit one day, sometimes they sit two days, sometimes three days, sometimes they get, you spend th two years following someone. It seems like they spent one, maybe two days with Martha, but she is fucking on one I in mean, the interview. She is on one. All of the time. That is the Martha Stewart experience, including, I mean, you know, whether it's like spinning sugar and <laughs> or being like, what did I miss most in federal prison when I went for insider training? Lemons. <laughs> that is a that is a legit thing that Martha Stewart said. I missed lemons. What a fucking icon. She is truly iconic in this movie. I I did not know hardly anything about the first. 40 years of her life. Yeah. And so a lot of that is revelatory. She's incredibly candid and the film is very clever at talking about her ma her marriage, 
mm-hmm. and her family and the sort of like the building of the brand and her yeah. iconography and the books and the magazines and all of that stuff for, for me was new. was new. I didn't yeah. know any of it. Once we get into sort of like 1994, I knew a lot more about what we were doing, but it was very entertaining. It was done actually somewhat similar to the style of Amy, where the only face you see talking is Martha's. You hear a lot of other voices, people in her life, okay, journalists, people giving context throughout the film, but you never see their faces. And she turned over to RJ an insane archive. Yeah. I mean, diaries from the 70s, photographs from the ages of like nine all the way through the present day. She has maintained everything in her life, as you imagine yeah, she might. Yeah, she's scrapbook. She's, she's doing it all. Yes. I mean, I mean she also is still... She's in her 80s. You texted me that she showed showed up in gold on my pants to the premiere. She dominated the q and like, I don't know if you know this, but she kind of started a feud again in The New Yorker this week because Did in she? addition to Martha, the documentary coming out, this, it's very exciting fall for me. Yes. October 1st, Ina Garten's memoir will be released. Wow. And uh, They're beefing? Martha told The New Yorker that they were friends, but then Ina cut her off after she went to prison and she found that very hurtful. Oh, and that's like wow. a real quote that Martha Stewart gave The New Yorker. This, It's just, what more could you ask for? She, that's beautiful. She does talk at length. There's a lot of time spent on her um, prosecution. And sure. I had not realized that it was James Comey who was the prosecutor <laughs> of that case, which uh, speaks volumes. The film yeah. makes quite a bit of hay out of that, yeah. about the, uh, the, the, the show pony diva mm-hmm. nature of the James Comey experience. But um, just ever, a really good version yeah. of a movie like this because that it's a just she's such a great subject, and she's really like one of the critical women of the 20th century, first female self made billionaire in history. As I said to you, it's a an a, a, an American story like through and through, completely fascinating. Good movie. I'm probably hyping it up too much, but I think you'll really like it. No, I'm sure I will. Have you ever read her blog? If you guys have any time today, and I don't you've think never, so. I, listen, she was an unbelievable, just like total dissociation <laughs> blog like 2014 and like suddenly there'd be a picture of like her dog <laughs> like you know and it was like well my dog died you know but she really loved like chasing straws or something it was great during the Q&A she was asked about social media because you know she's she's like really strong on Instagram and TikTok right yeah, now I know Martha is posting thirst traps she, she that was discussed <laughs> that's actually featured in the film but um she had a really funny comment where she was like you know what I really loved was Twitter the good old days of Twitter. She was like, here's what we would do. It would be me and a few of my executives and we'd sit around and we would say, should this cake be chocolate or peppermint? And we'd post a poll and then we would decide based on what the people told us about what the recipe should be. And she was like earnestly saying, I built my business on the back of crowdsourcing on Twitter. What a strange person. Clearly a person, one who hates therapy and is being confronted by probing questions about the deepest parts of her life and her reaction to it rocks and occasionally reminded me of you occasionally yeah thank, that's great thank okay, you okay I mean but she's never she's never liked questions I'll never forget she did a skincare interview once and they were like so what do you do for clogged pores Martha's response I've never had a clogged pore <laughs> in my life I did like, not know she was such a babe as a young woman oh yeah like I knew yeah, she was yeah, yeah, she, yeah, you know yeah, conventionally yeah. beautiful but yeah. I didn't you know she was a model and there are a lot of photos of her like at 22 being radiant in Italy um, cool movie I liked it great I'm very excited big crowd pleaser at the festival sure uh, speaking of crowd pleasing there were two movies that I have described here as the commercial winners mm-hmm. these are movies that I am betting people are going to like right. I liked them both they okay. are not my favorite movies I saw at the festival okay. they have flaws yeah but I in, I had a great time watching them, and I'm ver- I'm also very curious what and you're God going to make of these we movies. Need more of that I agree. In the world. I, and at the festival, I was like, it's it's important to have movies like this. Um, there may have been too many bids for commerciality at the festival this year, but the first is Conclave, which we've talked about quite a bit on the show. Mm-hmm. Who got it in the auction? I did think you get I it? Ultimately, did. you got it. I wonder how successful this movie will be at the box office. I think it has a chance to be that kind of middle ground seven, eight, nine entry in mm-hmm. the best picture race. This is a, an adaptation of a novel by Robert Harris, which I had not realized is like a little bit more of an airport novel. Um, and the story is... <laughs> You're speaking my language. Okay. <laughs> Keep Once going. again, it's like, <laughs> if it's airport novel <laughs> and the Vatican is involved, <laughs> I'm on board. It is about the selection of a new pope. And it is just, frankly, a very thinly veiled 
satire or portrait of electoral politics okay. and the kind of backbiting and whether it's a criticism of the Catholic Church and the way that that is ultimately a place for politics mm-hmm. or a criticism of, say, the American electoral system. Mm-hmm. There are overt references into the movie about how this is sort of like, you could say it is like a Hillary Trump kind of election. You could say— Does anyone say hanging chads? N- no one says that, but someone says, what did he promise you, Secretary of State? That oh, is a, a, okay. a line that Got is uttered it. in the movie. Okay. So— Children, do you know what hanging chads is? Okay. Oh, my God. Jack says no. Jack does not know what hanging— I guess you are younger. He's, yeah. That's, that's like the year of oh birth. Oh, my God. Chads. chads. The 2000 election when they had the recount and then how are we going— yeah, and so whether on the, the hanging chad on the paper ballot counted as a vote or not. It's a very traumatic experience. Okay, so that's, listen, it's just good to check in with the youth from time to time. They're, the voting <laughs> system in the Vatican is honestly not that different. It is literally writing on paper. Uh, anyway, this is a movie starring Ray Fiennes, Stanley Tucci, John Lithgow, Isabella Rossellini. Standout performance from an actor named Sergio Castellito, an Italian actor who's phenomenal in the movie. Directed by Edward Berger, who made All Quiet on the mm-hmm. Western Front, which I think we were kind of both kind of mixed on. Um, it's like impressive, but it was like, not great. Yeah, and it was also like the Netflix's like late push of okay, what about this for Best Picture yes. and all the international movie like a war. You know, it was interesting. I liked the score, whatever. Yeah, and this movie also has a very um, loud and and I would say overstated. Listen, you score. haven't said Agatha Christie yet, even though you said everyone said it. It was just like it's like an Agatha Christie who it did is, it. it, and it, I was just like, it I is. am in. It it is very Agatha Christie. Um, it's great with me. It's like Agatha Christie, but with voting. Um, and it's damn entertaining. Fines is incredible. He plays the sort of the master of the conclave, the dean who is sort of managing the process of finding the next pope, and he has a strong relationship to the previous pope, and that you know the story sort of unfurls from there. It's uh, it's just damn entertaining. It's very silly, and there is a there is a significant twist that will be discussed. Oh, great! At length. Listen, airport novel. You know, it's in the Louvre. I uh, I liked it. I liked it. I think you will like it too. If you don't okay. like it, I'll be quite surprised. Me too. The second movie. <laughs> It's called Saturday Night. So you sent me many updates over the weekend. I loved being in touch with you. Um, I loved hearing your thoughts. I was thinking, I don't want Amanda to feel like I'm not connecting with her no, in no, this no. time. No, no, It was great. It was really, spe- it was wonderful. And I loved hearing about it. And I just, I saw that Saturday Night was premiering. I saw Bill Murray showed up. Just looking at my phone, waiting for the text. Nothing. Just, you just drove right on by. Well, the reason why, honestly, is not because I didn't want to communicate with you. One, yeah. the service at these uh, cinemas sure, yeah, is yeah, yeah. terrible in Telluride, yeah. honestly. And I wish they would fix that. But it's probably for the best so you don't look at your phone. But I went directly from Saturday Night to the film The Apprentice, which is about Donald Trump. And I had to Brother. race across okay. to, go, to get to the next movie. I probably would have sent you some thoughts. Did so, you run? I hustled. Okay. I would say I hustled. I did a quite a bit of hustling this weekend okay. just to get from theater to theater. But um, got my steps in, as they say. Saturday Night is the comic thriller, <laughs> real-time drama about the making of the moments leading up to the first episode of Saturday Night Live. Mm-hmm. It is directed by complex figure of contemporary Hollywood, Jason <laughs> Reitman. Cast of incredibly exciting young actors. We talked about it a couple times. We talked about it when the trailer came out. Um, I liked it. I don't. I don't know what to say. That's good. I think it's. I think it's very fun. I think it is incredibly. It's easily the most well-made Jason Reitman movie. Um, it's shot on sixteen millimeter. It has a great look. And as as someone who I was chatting with at the festival said, it's a little bit of him trying to do his PTA thing. You might find that a little obnoxious, but I don't think too obnoxious I don't, I don't because really of care. the movie like, style. I would rather Jason Reitman be doing this than trying to explain motherhood to me. You know what I'm saying? Or making a Ghostbusters movie. Honestly, I think if you if you if he had to choose. Paying homage to his father's generation of great comic talents yeah. is pretty good. The The movie, I think, manages to avoid a lot of the tricks of like mimicry where you're comparing the real life figures. Right. A handful of the performers, I was telling Alea that her beloved Dylan O'Brien as Dan Aykroyd is fantastic in the movie. Hold on, Googling Dylan O'Brien. Um, Corey Michael Smith. As Chevy Chase. Who is, is this? Terrific. Oh, Maze Runner, Teen Wolf. Yes. Okay. All right, Alea, I see you. You um, know. He's really good. Gabriel Abel, I thought was good. Some people seem to think that he was too young for the part of playing Lauren Michaels. I thought I, mean, I thought he worked. But Lauren is like almost forty when he launches. Thirty. Or, he was thirty. Okay, he was thirty. He was thirty. Okay. Labelle is like twenty-two. He's okay. definitely too young. But I thought he pulled it off. And then the standout for oh, me. Wow, is, Dylan O'Brien was the voice of Bumblebee in Bumblebee. He was. He okay. was. He's a part of my extended Transformers <laughs> universe. Thank you to Dylan O'Brien. Uh, 
The standout is Rachel Sennett, who plays Rosie. Absolutely. Who plays Rosie Schuster, who is Lauren Michaels' soon-to-be ex-wife and a key writer on the show. Yeah. And she's a star. Like, she's just a star. I know. Uh, and she grounds the movie and is very, 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 uh, I don't want to say she's, she's the brain of the movie, I would say. Okay. Um, Cooper Hoffman, terrific as Dick Ebersol. The movie has pace. It has jokes that are lifted explicitly from the Saturday Night Live books. Okay. It has Michael O'Donohue saying the ferocious, hilarious Michael O'Donohue things in the movie. People just like pop up out of nowhere to be great. Like Tracy Letts just like shows up for one scene and is amazing. You know, it's one of those movies where it's just moving fast. It's 95 minutes. I mean, fun is fun. That's it's fun. It's, if it's fun, I'm great with it. Is it the great treatise on creativity in the 20th century? It's not. <laughs> I don't care. It's it's not. Um, I have been trying to figure out if it is an awards movie. Because I think it's a very commercial movie that older people will like, obviously, because they're seeing stuff they know. And younger people might like because of the cast and the energy of the movie. I don't know if people are going to be like, this is a great film. But that hasn't stopped movies from getting nominated for Best Picture before. And if it's feel good and also speaks to a certain audience, the, the tricky thing is, is like, are the, the Academy voters of a certain age, like, do they remember it too well? You know, I don't know. Because for you, it's like in amber and you've seen the reruns and you've read all the things, but you weren't there. But I wasn't there. there. Yeah, you're right. So I don't know. It might it might be a movie that is honestly pitched at someone like me more okay. than Well, the you're two, not an Academy voter. The, well, I don't mean specifically me, <laughs> but someone who's like, you know, somebody between 35 and 50 who loves SNL and is interested in its history and right. has bought the books and listened to the podcast, but doesn't doesn't feel like they own it. Okay. You know, like I don't own what's happening in this movie. It is still a historical recreation. So I think it's but I think I think it's you know, people have been joking about what does it mean to be Jason Reitman's best movie, kind of snarkily. <laughs> but it is among the best made movies that he's he's done. And he's trying some things in terms of like, you know, follow what like follow right, moves whatever. the camera. It's fine. I'll see the movie. I'm sure it's nice. I'm, I'm sure I'm it's speaking well to made. the audience, yeah, yeah, Amanda. Yeah, 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 yeah. They want to like, know about relax. this film. It's also, like, I'm sure we're gonna have to talk about it again. It's a weird awards year. So yes, not we, have to. I'm sure we will talk about it again. We will. And I'm sure I'll I'll chuckle throughout the film. Maybe you won't. You know, maybe you'll despise it. I don't have that kind of hate in my heart. I would be surprised. You know, my friend David... I have plenty of other places to apply my hate, but like... I saw my friend David Ehrlich at the festival. Yeah. Noted contrarian. Great critic. Yeah. And I saw him before we saw the movie. And as we were chatting, I was like, man, I think he's going to fucking hate this movie. And he did hate it. He wrote really yeah. one of the only deeply negative yeah, yeah, reviews. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think he found it very solipsistic and pointless. And I, I can't really argue with the points that he was making, but... At, the 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 screening was a fucking rock concert. People were so into it. It was probably like the most energetic screening I went to all weekend. And you know, like you said, Bill Murray introduced it. He was hilarious. Like it was just one of. It could be a festival high. It could be that it was on a Saturday night when we all saw it. But I think it's a pretty energetic and fun movie. I mean, we all enjoy watching an SNL skit when it's good. I'm sure it, it will be fine. I I don't know if I need to do like eight Reitman deep dives before the, the award season. I agree. You can do I that agree. on your own time. I won't be doing that either. Okay. The big disappointment of the festival for me was the end. Oh, sad. This is a musical about um, a family living in a bunker after the apocalypse. That family is portrayed by Michael Shannon, Tilda Swinton, uh, and George Mackay. Sounds great on paper. Directed by Joshua Oppenheimer, who made The Look of Silence. Um, and the act of killing, like Romel Ross, a documentarian trying to port over what he does into a scripted film. And this movie is two and a half hours, and the songs were not good, and most of the performers couldn't sing very well. And I really didn't get it at all. And this was like my most anticipated movie of the festival. I think this movie will make you want to tear your eyes out. I really, I, <laughs> I, I, I think you will, you will turn into a Wolverine what, while mean, watching this movie. You just said two and a half hours, the songs aren't good, the people can't sing. The idea of the movie is very good, which is that, and if you... If you My s- eyebrow just started twitching. Yeah, I, I, I can see your face. <laughs> uh, the idea of the movie is basically like, how do you confront or avoid your responsibility to your, the world, to your family, to the future? The, the family that is portrayed in the bunker, we're meant to believe is at least partially responsible for right, the apocalypse. Right, right, right. And so... It's a movie about avoidance or not avoidance. 
what kind of songs? Like, are we wholly original, like bursting into song to explain what's going on? I know, on but in it's the scene. like like a traditional like yes. Rodgers and Hammerstein type yeah. musical. Are they doing more orchestra of a pop musical? No, number? no, no. More okay, that would be worse. I mean, it's much more. Um, it's it's a sort of quieter, more spare arrangements, but they're orchestra. Um, okay, and. I shouldn't say the songs are bad, but they're just not great. And so if you're asking Michael Shannon to sing into camera for three consecutive minutes, like, they just need to be better. Yeah. And uh, oh I don't know. I, I, I was bummed. I don't like it when people sing into camera. Uh, yeah. Well, Emilia Perez also features a lot of singing into camera. I would say that the, there's an energy in that movie that even if you don't love what they're doing, with one exception, there's one musical number that is terrible in that movie, but the <laughs> others are really actually quite good. Uh, musicals are hard. They're very hard. Mm-hmm. They were an interesting theme of this festival. They're amazing when you get them right, but you know, one of the one of the documentaries that I saw at the festival was also kind of a musical. It's called Piece by Piece. This is the Pharrell Williams Lego movie. Martha loved it. She Did posted she? it. Yeah. And then, well, but it was kind of one of those quid pro quo, quo things because Pharrell gave he them a Martha. song well and gave them a song for the documentary so oh. she was there and she was like I just saw his amazing documentary also thank you for giving me this you know yeah that's like billionaires yeah, you know handshake stuff yeah 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 uh, and I don't, I don't blame them for that piece by piece complicated many years ago when I was a music <laughs> journalist I I pitched but never wrote a book about Pharrell Williams I'm obsessed with Pharrell Williams I'm less so in the last 10 years since he has become like the happy guy but when I was writing about music I really saw him as I think the movie sees him, which is as essentially like our Quincy Jones. You know, he yeah. he is um, someone who has kind of straddled all genres, all um, audiences. He's He just has that like pop golden touch that producers before him have had. He's really the first like super producer, famous person who became an artist in his own right. Uh, this movie, which is directed by Morgan Neville, is I thought half brilliant and half empty the first half of the film especially when you start seeing the rise of him as a musician coming out of virginia out of pretty much total obscurity and getting beats in front of rappers i was like all in lego all in lego so like lego nori talking in detail about (laughs) finding the super thug beat and learning how to rap along to it and help pharrell helping him write the hook like it is it's classic biodoc stuff where they interview the famous person and yeah, then they tell yeah, you the story, yeah, 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 yeah. but in Lego. And so he does use the Lego animation to some like pretty extraordinary effect. Like Carl Sagan, the host of Cosmos, plays a significant part of it because stars is such a huge theme in Frell's life. So like you get to see like Lego stars and the Lego interplanetary <laughs> system. There's some stuff and underwater and Atlantis is a big theme for him. So you see all that stuff. It's pretty cool. The stuff I love the most was just him being like, and here's how I got uh, I just want to love you to Jay Z, and then right. Jay Z talks. I know but Lego Jay Z. I've seen the trailer; it's really funny. There's a stretch where he, he t- goes through like the first four or five hits when he was at the center of rap. That is just candy for somebody like me, yeah. and I'm just like I just would watch three hours of this. No, it's, I know it's like it's like my version of okay when the music biopic they get in the room and then suddenly you yes. realize that they're writing right. respect. Right, respect. Like it's respect. Yes. Sure, of course. Yes, that stuff is lovely. But like, is this lovely. is literally a Lego biopic with Pharrell's cooperation directed by Morgan Neville. Like, I am bewildered it, by this There trailer. are a lot of convergences. I would say the movie really had me until the beginning of the end of the second act, beginning of the third act, where it was sort of like, here's Pharrell's challenge. And it was just that he had not written a hit song in like two and a half years or mm-hmm. something. Like, it just, it, like, he had no struggle. He, or if he did, he is he's un, not forthcoming about what his struggle was. And so he really kind of like closes down. He doesn't talk as much. He lets like people like Buster Rhymes and Missy Elliott fill in the gaps for a lot of his story. And, you know, it honestly just seems like a guy who for 25 years has been at the center of pop culture and is incredibly wealthy and has a lovely family and gets to make a movie about his life in Lego. Yeah. So it's not that deep, but the fun parts are very fun. Um, Do you want to hear about The Apprentice? (sighs) I guess so. I mean, I do, you know, like, will you do the backstory? I'm very, I'm very tired already. You're very tired because? Because, I don't know, Trump is just kind of like Beetlejuice to me at this point, you know? It's like you, like, if you don't say his name, he doesn't exist. And that's not true. Everybody, you need to go vote against him. Like, <laughs> I please make sure you can vote and yeah. make sure that you 
vote against yeah. Donald Trump. And you were going to vote for RFK Jr. Right, and he exactly. pulled out. So, so now yeah, because he's yeah. going to be Secretary of State. That's right. um, him and the brain worm, they'll share it. <laughs> and the dog and also the... The bear. What about the bear that he found? Not the, I meant the bear, but then did you see there was also like a whale or something? Because yeah, yeah. when Ben Affleck was rumored to be dating Kit Kennedy, his daughter, mm-hmm. then they unearthed some other story about RFK pulling like a blubber. I mean, <laughs> see, this is this is what happens. It's like, Sometimes we just don't need to get into this Rita. And this movie feels a little bit like, okay, you made a, a movie and you've you've timed it to the election and you kind of got gifted by controversy and one of the investors not liking the movie, the, that investor being Dan Snyder, which, you know, eat it, sir. <laughs> and then, <laughs> like... So then it like finally gets released and it's a surprise thing and all the MSNBC moms are like, we did it. Like, let's go see The Apprentice. But like, do I need to see this movie? Like, I mean, come on. Well, my answer to that question is no. Yeah, see, um, that's the thing. Of course not. Here's why. You know, it stars Sebastian Stan as Donald Trump, Maria Bakalova as Ivana Trump, and uh, Jeremy Strong as Roy Cohn. All three of them, genuinely exceptional in this movie. Jeremy Strong, of course, is the standout. Yeah. He is a fucking freak of nature. He's the man. Like, he, he completely transforms into Roy Cohn. He's, like, spends 40% of this movie in, like, a bikini with a full-body tan. Like, <laughs> he he is a maniac and so committed and just does the thing that you always say about great actors, which is, just like, he just disappears into that part. Yeah. Jeremy Strong is gone, and it is Roy Cohn. Sebastian Stan, to his credit, that's a very hard person to play. He's someone, he's probably the most famous person in the world, and he's a person who's particular affectations are so ingrained in our culture because of the way they've been parodied and mocked or celebrated or whatever. And he does a very, he makes a really good choice in the movie, which is that, you know, it's a film that takes place roughly from the mid seventies all the way through, I think it's the late nineties. The, those affectations that we know, the hands moving in and out, the, this move, the pursing and the widening of the lips, the way that Trump looks and communicates <laughs> They very slowly evolve. He doesn't start oh, okay. in parody. He All starts right. in a more normal form. And it's a, it is an impressive feat to eventually evolve into this, this monstrous figure that we know in our history. The problem with the movie is exactly what you might imagine, which is like, we know all of what happened. If you've read one New York Magazine feature about Donald Trump written any time in the last 20 years, you probably know everything that happens in the movie. Right. You know that Roy Cohn is the person who gave him the playbook for how to be a domineering, dishonest titan of industry. You know that Trump was heinous in his personal relationships, that he was a shrewd but corrupt businessman. You know that he is a kind of like philosopher king in a lot of ways of this very gross sense of the world, but that he does have a strong point of view on how to be in the world and how to succeed. Where he did before he became senile, but that's another. Yeah, but in the, in the 90s, you know, the art of the deal is like part of this yeah. part of the film. And I, I there were a couple of, I guess a couple of moments, particularly like the beginning of his relationship with his soon-to-be wife that maybe I didn't know as much about that was somewhat revealing. And that's maybe the only part of the movie that feels by genuinely. soon-to-be, you mean Marla? No, no, oh, no, Ivana. Ivan- okay, Ivana. Um, if Marla Maples doesn't even figure into the film at all. Okay. Um, but, and you come out of the movie and you're like, so this is like a bad guy. And he is a figure yeah. of what's wrong with the way that we teach people to pursue power in this country. And he's dishonest and immoral. And I I know. Yes. You know? I know we as know. well. Yeah. I, I mean, here's the thing. I, I don't watch cable news for entertainment. And I don't really feel that I need to watch this for entertainment. I like all of the actors involved. I, I And I... And I I'm very clear once again, please go vote. But other than that, like, I'm good. Yeah. I think if you are an MSNBC mom or akin to that, you probably yeah. will enjoy it you, or whatever the right word is that is not enjoy. Um, you'll be compelled by the movie. But right. I came out of it feeling gross and kind of bummed out. Yeah. Documentaries. And I'll, also you'd printed there and you're in the mountain air, you know. And also I was coming out of Saturday Night, which was Absolutely. just like a shot right. in the sure. arm, you know, yeah. and then sat, had to sit with that. Couple of quick documentaries. I saw Will and Harper, which was at Sundance, but I did not see it there. Okay. Which is about uh, Will Ferrell and Harper Steele. They're longtime friends. Um, Harper Steele came out to Will as a woman a few years ago. They documented this journey where they drove across the country together and talked about their friendship and what Harper was going through and you know her evolution. And 
uh, just like a really just heartful movie that yeah. just makes you feel good. I thought that was really good. Um, I saw this film Blink by Daniel Rohrer who made Navalny about a family whose children, three of the four children or maybe four of the five children in this family are diagnosed with a degenerative eye disease and they will soon lose their vision. Mm. And so these children get to ask to go do anything that they want in the world. And so their parents take them on all these adventures to see the world together. It's a hard movie to watch as a parent, but beautiful and really interesting. Um, I definitely recommend it. It's like a Nat Geo I, movie. I, we got to move on right now. It's, I'm sorry. I know. Hard. It's just like, it's, it's, it's but they're a like, I want to like play with Legos on an elephant no, and then I they like can't. go and do I'm, it. I mean, that sounds really lovely, but like, okay, I, okay. I can't watch it right now. Um, <laughs> that's pretty much it. Those are, you know, I saw a couple of other movies that I didn't love that much. Maybe we can talk about them as you quiz me. I did miss a bunch of stuff. I didn't do a good job with the international films this year. Okay. Um, I'll probably try to catch those later. There were a lot of convergences. I'm going to list them to very quickly. Okay. Musicals with non-musical leads, The End and Amelia Perez. Right. Documentarians shifting to scripted, The End and Nickel Boys. Curious biopics. We didn't talk about Maria. Yeah, well, we're going to do Venice from afar in a yes. second. So Obfuscating biodocs. Piece by Piece and Martha. Mm -hmm. Some things that Martha would not get into, you might be surprised to learn. And then TikToks about network executives. Great. Saturday night and September 5. Like, you know, at the end, Sean, you're just looking for representation. That's so <laughs> congratulations to you. <laughs> do I relate to Lorne Michaels? Is that why I love that film? Uh, what are the superlatives? What do you want to know? Okay. Best celebrity sighting. I mean, I saw Angelina Jolie. She was there. Yeah. So she flew from Venice where she did like full court press. I think it was Maria was the second night. Um, at Venice, yes. Yes, at Venice. Yes. Um, and she and Pablo Lorraine, the director of Maria, came. Right. Like, did the whole thing, got the standing ovation. You know, everybody timed it. And then flew to Telluride, yes. just missing her ex-husband, Brad Pitt. You know, the one of the great things about Telluride, as I've told you in the past, is that very famous people come mm -hmm. and they just sit in the crowd and they watch the movies yeah. and they're just wearing jeans and they hang out. And it's not like, there's no red carpets. You know, there's no awards given out at the festival. It's just a... It's just, you're just there to see movies. They do spotlights, right? They do like... They do tributes. Tributes. And didn't Angelina get a tribute? She did not. She didn't? The tribute this year was Saoirse Ronan was the big star oh, who got a right. tribute. I mean, I saw her in the booth. She looked great. She, um, her film, The Outrun Screened, which I had previously seen out of Sundance, which I did not love, honestly. She's very good in the film. But she was uh, recognized. Thelma Schoonmaker was recognized. Sick. Um, I did not go to that tribute, unfortunately, because it conflicted with the movie I had to see. But she's obviously a legend. And then the third tribute was Jacques Audiard, the director. Angelina is getting a Toronto. Makes uh, sense. We tribute. we will talk about her more in depth when we get to the next segment of this discussion. Okay. Uh, but you know, in addition to that, like I said, Peter Sarsgaard, he must yeah, have seen like, ten movies. Yeah, like who was just hanging out going to? He movies? was there the whole time, and he if you came up to him, he was super nice. If what you didn't, he was fine. I mean, he was just super the cool. King of Brooklyn Halloween. Yes. Sits on the stoop. He hands out the candy while I guess Maggie, whoever takes the kids trick or treating. I hope he's a nice person because he seems like the man. Yeah. Uh, he was, so he was very present, you know, every single film I saw was introduced by the filmmakers. So they were all, cool. all there. Yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. Morgan Neville was just wandering around. Edward Berger was there just wandering around. Like all, it's all very touchable, you right. know, like it's all, they're all right in front of me. I'm trying to think of what other big actors were. I didn't see Saoirse Ronan, but she was there all weekend. Um, hmm. 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 Oh, Mikey Madison and the cast of Adora. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I mean, that yeah. they were definitely photographed a yeah lot. they and Sean Baker were everywhere and um particularly uh Mark Eidelstein who plays the 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 kid the, the, the young the yeah. Russian Timothy Chalamet I mean he's unreal he was everywhere too he was he was like at my 9 a.m. Maria screening looking hung over <laughs> as hell I don't know if he was hung over but he looked hung over uh and he's amazing in that movie so th th those were okay. probably the highlights that was good okay best rumor that you can share best rumor. like film rumor you know I mean, if you know about anybody hooking up, I'd love to know that as well. But well, uh, I don't know about anybody hooking up. You know, the one, of the, one of the rumor, the two rumored special screenings were The Apprentice and A Real Pain, and that okay. happened. A Real Pain, which I mentioned at a Sundance as yes. well. Uh, actually, Kieran Culkin was there. He's somebody I forgot. I saw and his Jesse hair Eisenberg. was really quite something. Yeah, he's phenomenal in A Real Pain that comes out later this fall too. Um, the other rumor was that Nosferatu was going to be the other movie that was going to be there. Okay. So this was it there. It was not there. Okay. This is my my pitch to tell you, Rod. I've thought about sending a note to to Julie Hunsinger, okay. who runs this festival. Okay. I think that they need a midnight portion of the festival. I think the only thing that they don't really do there is genre. Right. They don't show horror movies. A lot of people thought the substance, for example, should have been at this festival because of what it is and what it could mean in right. the future. Um, 
I think, you know, it's a, an older festival and it's driven by patrons. I do think that they need like 11 p.m. programming and movies like Nosferatu should be playing there. Um, you you would say that, though. But, you know, so the reason I say this. It's like that the meme, like the Dumois meme, like likely place for him to be. You know, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> well, OK, just go with me on this because I've thought about it a lot. Last summer, Talk to Me premieres at Sundance and becomes a big summer hit. This year, out of nowhere, Long Legs becomes a big summer hit. There is an appetite among young moviegoers for clever, original, ho- genre horror that still has a, a, a modicum of prestige. Right. Nosferatu is obviously a high-end example of that. Mm-hmm. This is like a real master filmmaker. It's a focus movie. It's not like a universal yeah, movie. Yeah, I mean, I assume that they're saving that more for like an awards push, right? It's totally. Well, I, I'm curious about whether that's going to happen or not, but at a minimum, I think it's going to be a big box office movie. Yeah. But movies like that would fit in here in part because I can feel the festival getting a little younger. And this is something young people want. And I'm not saying I can save Telluride because Telluride's doing just fine without me. Right. But I do think that it would give a new character to the festival that would be cool. So that rumor not coming to pass of a movie screening um, is a little disappointing. Okay. this I mean, this leads us to biggest disappointment, which you already answered sort of the end. Yeah. The end was and not, not great. And not getting to see Nosferatu. Not getting to see Nosferatu. I mean, okay. I saw The Friend, the new... Um, Naomi Watts, Bill Murray movie about oh. a woman whose friend dies and she um, adopts his dog. And uh, I didn't really care for yeah. that movie okay. very much. Number four, biggest regret or worst personal decision, a.k.a. this is the um, Taste of Things Dinner Award, um, which to remind you guys, last year at Telluride, uh, Sean was seated next to Ethan Hawke at an opulent dinner served by the the, the team and the chefs behind the wonderful film Taste of Things and you left to go see Nyad. So I do not have anything as dramatic as that okay. story. Um, I I think I clearly, I skipped the, I skipped every party. I didn't go to any parties. Okay. I, 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 uh, I think I now get invited to things because they know I won't come. Oh, okay. You know? Interesting. I had a couple of conversations with some publicists yeah, about this. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't go to not a single one. This is the first year I didn't go to a single party. I didn't do drinks. I didn't go out to any of the special dinners. Did you like sit at the bar and mingle with people? There's during no dinner? time. There's no time. I don't eat dinner. What did you eat? Granola bars. I had a hot dog. Okay. I had a gluten free frozen pizza. This is like I had a turkey sandwich. This is really, really I had, upsetting. I I did some accounting. I did I had six packs of Twizzlers. Okay. Four packs of Mike and Ike's. Okay. One Reese's peanut butter cups. Um, yeah. Roughly 38 cups of coffee. Can I, so like a real, can I tell you a real thing that I did this yeah. weekend? Because obviously I was getting texts from you and then I was looking at all the photos from Venice. My phone was serving me a lot of photos of, of me in, on water taxis last year <laughs> at this time, which is sort of just a Were you dr- jealous of your former self? Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was like a pretty dramatic how it started, how it's going <laughs> for me personally. <laughs> Um, But so then at one point, I was literally like, I was looking at Airbnbs on the Lido for next year. Mm -hmm. Like, I put in the dates and thinking about if I could get you also to go. But you'll never give up Telluride. But then I, so I was thinking about it and I was like looking at the Airbnbs and I was like, okay, this has enough room. But then we got to think about food. And I was like, literally thinking about like you know, what can I, like, prepare to, like, make sure that Sean, like, eats vegetables so that he survives for, like, 10 days in Venice because it goes on forever. I, I have a counter to your pitch. Yeah. Which is that the people want Amanda and Telluride. I had a number of people <laughs> That's really nice. say that they really, they want you to come. They want us to do a big dinner there. They want us to do an okay. event there. Like, the I honestly could not right, believe so, how many big so picture listeners were there. Put, that's really, that's really nice. Thank you, everyone. Let's put the rest of the cards on the table. Okay. So, I didn't get Oasis tickets. You tried. Um, I didn't even try. No, no, no. I didn't even oh, you try. Didn't try. No, okay, of okay. course. Like, uh, Leia was asking okay, me when I walked first in. First of all, I by did I try? I mean, did I sort of like ask my husband if he would try for me? <laughs> and he was like, okay. I don't think we're going to. He was like, I don't think I should. Do you really want me to? And okay. I was kind of like a half-hearted no. Mm-hmm. Um, but that proved the right thing because it was like a full Ticketmaster debacle. Yep. And yep. we wouldn't have gotten them. Um, so, again, there are rumors. Mm-hmm. That, that more dates outside. I think they're going to come to the U.S. I yeah, think so. Yeah, I do. So there's a, there's a rumored date in this time zone that would conflict with the Venice Film Festival. Well, last time you were talking dates, you didn't have your dates right. You know, I know that. So but then, and I checked with my source, and my source is listening. Is it Liam Gallagher? 
No. <laughs> um, and I, I, I know that I didn't have my dates right, but this seems like maybe. So you're not going to come to the Telluride Film no, Festival, no, no, one of the greatest no, no, no. places so on was earth. Like, I was like, I like really want to go back to Venice. I love the Venice Film okay, Festival. Right. I, everyone looked so glamorous. Okay. I'll tell everyone that when they ask next Can year. Where's you? Amanda? She said no. No, she said no, no, she's no. not interested. Can I tell you that George and Brad went on a double date to a restaurant that I also dined at last? Like, basically, I could have been there with Brad and George. George and Brad who? Yeah, just just two guys that okay. I know. Um, I just, all the, it's, everyone looks so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's right on the water. Mm -hmm. It's Venice. Sophia was there. She was wearing a culture. How nice. How nice. You know, yeah. I, I, as a person who also, like, doesn't go to the parties and basically just watches movies, marvels at how weird the standing ovations are, <laughs> and then goes and has pasta. It's like the best place in the world. So I, and I, I'm, guys, I really need something to look forward to right now. So the other thing though that I could kind of propose to you okay. is that if we do can. Uh-huh. I'm already spoken for next May. <sighs> I have plans. I have plans. I told you guys when you booked this stupid golf trip <laughs> that it was at the same time as can. Yeah. And we have you on record being like, I made a mistake. We should have gone to can this year. I am who I am. Sometimes I see films, sometimes I golf. <sighs> anyway, I'm really glad that people, that you had a nice time at Telluride and that the people there are aware. I would love to go to a dinner there. It's just... I mean, you would love the parties there too because it is, it's exactly what I'm describing. I mean, you're just... Like, I didn't go to the Netflix party, but Angelina Jolie is just milling around the Netflix, Netflix yeah, party. Yeah, but I know? don't actually like to meet the people. You I know? don't either. That's why I don't go. Yeah. I want to go and like, talk to the publicists and executives that I know. I that's like what I'm interested Negroni in I like the Negroni next to the ocean. Um... That's okay. kind of, that's my guiding light. As always, I support you while quietly mocking you. You well, know, that's really, I mean, that's the energy so, we're bringing. So what you're saying is that you didn't have any bad personal decisions. You just ate granola bars and didn't talk to Well, I don't know what I missed days. out on. That's the thing. I don't know what okay. fun night I missed out on. And I did see a bunch of friends and, you know, I, I have made over the years so many good friends just from waiting in line to go see movies. Tell your right friends. So many, uh, so many journalists and publicists and just people that I've gotten to know you know, 10, how 15 did, people who I, I see at every screening. I would ask those people how they get you to remove your AirPods and talk to them. Oh, I was so social. You would have been so really? proud of me. Yeah, just sit, hang. I mean, my friend Chris Rose and I, he and I hung out the whole weekend. Okay, we saw like good. 10 movies together. And so I was with him the whole time. But yeah, I've, like I've met some patrons who I just like, consistently see it. My okay. shout out to my guy Vince. Like I hung out with All him right. a lot. All right, I'm proud of you. I, I, I've listened to very few pods. Okay. Very few. Probably the few, fewest pods I've listened to over a weekend in years. Yeah. There uh, weren't that many this weekend. It was that's kind true. Of, it was kind of quiet. Yeah. Uh, any other questions for me? Uh, the best movie going experience. You're just like, I'm here. It was probably this Saturday was night. Yeah. Everybody was fired like up. Um, you know, that wasn't the best movie that I saw, but it was the best experience. Okay. Let's talk about the award stuff. Okay. And we'll, we'll, do we'll dovetail that a little bit into Venice. So let's hold off on best picture for a minute because I do want to kind of game it out with you a little bit. Yeah. Best Actress is very crowded. It was very crowded at Telluride. As right. I said, there was a tribute to Sir Ronan, who's been nominated four or four. five times, four times. She'll almost surely be nominated a fifth time, maybe even a sixth time if she gets nominated for Blitz. She could be getting two yeah. nominations this year in addition to the outrun. She got the tribute. Every, everyone agrees she's, she's a genius. Wonderful. Like, she's just yeah. amazing. She's always good, you know. And she has the thing this year where she has both, is it the outlaw? The outrun? The outrun. Yeah. Outrun. And then Blitz, the Steve McQueen movie. Yeah. So she's, I think you're going to be seeing a lot of her. And often in the situation where like a very respected actor has two movies kind of in front of people's faces. Yes. You see like nominations that you might not otherwise see. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what is the other film that Kate Winslet had the year of the reader, but she had a year like that where she had two. It was a revolutionary road, maybe. That sounds great. Um, right. Yeah. And it was the same thing where she didn't get, I don't know, I can't recall if she got nominated for both, but she won for the reader and <clears throat> she had to make a decision about what category she was going to run right. in, but she was really front and center because of that. She'll be there. Mikey Madison, clearly the revelation of the year. Everyone has fallen in love with Honora. She's fantastic. Yeah. If I had to bet today, I would bet that she will win. I don't, oh, I don't know. I, I just I decided that in a couple of weeks we're going to do the big Oscar bet before you go. Okay. We're going to choose all the categories. We never had the follow-up. I know. Well, you got pregnant and then we couldn't have a crazy night. <laughs> I, was, you know? I was pregnant <laughs> at the time. And you <laughs> knew true. that. I, did I know that? Okay, you maybe did I did. know that. <clears throat> um, Remember I came in with five Chick-fil-A's for Oscar Oh, night? yeah. That's right. That was fun. <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> you are pregnant. I forgot. Um, we we did it in October of last year, Big Oscar Bet. Okay. <clears throat> this year, we'll do it in September before okay. you leave. All right. Mikey Madison, Angelina. So, yeah. Maria also she's running. Pr- played. She's she's deeply running. To go yeah. to Venice and tell you right, you are running. <clears throat> Angelina Jolie has made roughly like 1.5 good movies in her career. That's a take I have that I'm sharing. Maria might make it 2.5 because I did like Maria. Yeah, but you're like kind of a mark for that shit. I am a mark for Pablo Lorraine would like to explore a sad woman from the 20th century. That's no, just something you, I like. You are also a mark for Pablo Lorraine. El Conde. Who, like makes Neruda, beautiful things. No. That, yeah. like, I like him. He's, I think he's a really great filmmaker. Prove that he like control F through a history book once. That's you know? very rude. He, these are psychological portraits of complex women in our history. How dare you? Does Margaret Thatcher show up in Maria at any point? <laughs> flying? Aristotle and us this plays a huge role. Yeah, uh, no, I know. John F. Kennedy appears in the film. Yeah, okay. Among other people. Great. Who I don't I can't remember the actor's name. Okay, so it's not like it's a not a famous person, person. no. Okay. Um <clears throat> Maria is it is more of the same. It is the themes of Spencer and Jackie. I would say my power rankings of the trilogy are Jackie one, Maria two, Spencer three. Oh, interesting. Yes. Oh, okay. That's so good. I like Spencer more than you did. I like this movie a little more than Spencer. Here's the thing that this movie has. Maria Callas singing opera. Right. All the time. Mm-hmm. Like over and over That's again. That's pretty good. It is electrifying yeah. in a movie theater to hear this music. So at a minimum, if you like opera, and obviously you and I both do, yeah, the, it it works. No, I'm just thinking about seeing Maestro in Venice and all the music display, and it's so beautiful. It's powerful that theater. It's powerful, yeah. and I do think Angelina is very, very good in this part. She doesn't sing, you know, and you can tell when you're watching it. Yeah, I, they said they did the, like the quote unquote voice blend thing. On there are a couple of instances where they do, and you know, the movie is kind of framed around this idea of sort of like nearer to the end of her life and her kind of grappling with the idea of no longer performing and maybe not having her voice the way that she once did. You know, Lorraine is interested in, like, all these themes of, like, how women are put in boxes and how they're unable to express themselves even if they're the most dynamic figures in the world and, you know, all the same stuff from Tell those other more. movies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you sit here <laughs> in, in in that chair feeling deeply the way that Maria Callas once did, La Callas. Uh, but, you know, it's a great metatextual portrait of Angelina yeah, Jolie. Of same thing. Yeah. I mean, she's an incredibly famous person who people constantly talk about and other her and make her feel like she is not of this world in negative ways and... You can feel her kind of tangling with that in the movie. Yeah. So I liked it, and I and people are going to like her. They're going to think she's great, and it's a biopic well, of a musician. They are, and they, I mean, that's the interesting and complicated thing about Angelina Jolie is that people have often not— I mean, she won an Oscar for a Girl Interrupted like yep. 25 years ago. Yep. It's not like she's uncelebrated. But, she's, but her, 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 it's become more chilly over the years yeah. towards her. Yeah. So that'll be an interesting one where she is— I, you know, calibrating this campaign based on sort of like it's time and reckoning with this person, but will people respond to it in the way that she wants them to? I don't know. We're going to find out. Yeah. That movie was acquired by Netflix. Yeah. Which has an interesting domino effect that I'd like to speak to you about. Okay. So Carla Sofia Gascon, who um, is one of the stars of Emilia Perez, yeah. is clearly a best actress candidate. I think they will campaign hard for her. I think that would be a historic nomination. She's a trans woman. I do think that Angelina Jolie and that movie being acquired by Netflix puts Angelina Jolie into the primary position in Best Actress. Okay. Um, I could be wrong about that. It also means that Zoe Saldana specifically gets bumped down into a very soft Best Supporting Actress category. Very soft. Like historically soft. We can talk about it in a second. And then there's a few other movies that we either haven't seen or would be more like Outliers. So Amy Adams just saw the trailer to Night Bitch. Did you watch that? No. Doesn't look like an Oscar movie. Nicole Kidman, who got raves for Baby Girl at Venice. I mean, I could definitely see something like that happening. That's going to happen. Like, like I, I don't know anything. I haven't seen Baby Girl. I wasn't at Venice, but it's just like Nicole Kidman just being out here and being amazing. Nailing Harris Dickinson to the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Quite literally. Yeah. <laughs> just can't wait for that. Um, it's like, Automatic Oscar nomination. It feels like, like people. It. She really, people really do respect her. They do, and she, you know, continues to take chances and yeah. do interesting stuff. I'm very excited about that movie. I was disappointed that that movie was not a Telluride. One other thing about Telluride, no A24 movies. As f- hmm. I'm fairly certain, since A24 started 10, 12 years ago, that this is the first time that they did not have a film there. Maybe there was one other time, like in 2018 or something like that, but they almost always have a strong presence there. You know, Zone of Interest was there the last year. Very famously, Moonlight 
was there. You know, like yeah. they, uh, Lady Bird was there. They, they always have a strong, strong presence there. And there were a couple of movies at Venice and there were like four A24 movies at, at Toronto. Maybe it was just like the titles didn't match up, but I thought that that was notable. Yeah. Um, and then June Squibb in Thelma, which we've hardly talked about, but I wouldn't be stunned. She's 94 years old and is good in Thelma. She, and she's doing 94-year-old she action sequences. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and then Demi Moore in The Substance, which is a yeah. very, very, very brave performance. Still haven't seen it, okay. but I will see it okay. in, the, in the coming weeks. Need you to see it. The further along you get in your pregnancy no, before I, I mean, seeing it, it's it, hilarious. I think it will be like, Basically, she could get it waiting in the around. For you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I got nothing else to do. I might as well go see the substance and then podcast about it. Um, it's a crazy one. Supporting actress, very quickly. I think Daniel Deadweiler, who to me is a lead in the panel lesson, but they'll probably run in supporting. And then Zoe Saldana. I think they're both lead performances, but they're going to be run in supporting. And then after that, I don't even. I'm trying to game. I'm like Anjanu Ellis Taylor and Nickel Boys. Maybe she's not in the movie a whole bunch. Okay. Leonie Benish in September lot. 5th. She is really admired actor. Isabella Rossellini, who's in Conclave, I think her part is too small. I think were people surprised to see how small her part was. Could be one of those like weird. Oh, it's Isabella Rossellini. Yeah, it could be like yeah. Alan Alda in The Aviator or something. We're like, yeah, we should just nominate him. He's he's cool. We like, like him. her mother winning for Murder on the Orient Express. Good example. You know? Great like, example. What you, like, what are we doing Great here? Example. But also, it's Ingrid Bergman. I don't think Selena Gomez will be nominated, but she's going to run in that category too. She'll be at the awards. She will. You know, she will. She could sing. She performs a song in the film. That would be great. Okay. Um, my money is on Daniel Deadweiler right now. Well, that would, I mean, I haven't seen the movie, but that's a deserving Makes actor, sense. So She's yeah, very good. And she, you know, was that's quote unquote funny. snubbed in favor of uh, Two Leslie, you may recall. Her oh performance in Till, that was a big controversy. Yeah. Remember that? Wow, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Edward Norton just out here tweeting. Yeah. Best picture. Okay. Help me out. All right. So Dune 2. Mm-hmm. Let's, Honora, I'm, I'm going to write these down while you're talking. Dune part two. Anora. Anora. I think Sing Sing. Because baffled though we are by, you know. I'll go with you on that. A24 is not calling us and sharing their strategies, Mm -hmm. but they are pretty good at this. Mm -hmm. And I think Sing Sing, like, it both, I think it worried us how much it, like, smelled of Oscar, but Mm -hmm. also it is is really rewarding in the ways that it subverts that while also being something that will speak to people. Agree with you. Okay. Let's think. What else is coming out? So that's two movies that have come out Mm -hmm. and one that many have seen at festivals and is agreed upon as a great film this year. Right. Palm Door winner. Now what? Uh, I'm thinking. Off the top of your head, you, a noted Oscar pundit, can't think of many other movies. And this is a lot of people feel this way. This is what I'm saying. That's what's so interesting about this. (laughs) That's true. I swear I'm not totally checked out. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I I don't think that you are. I think Amelia Perez should be strongly considered. Okay. I think it's, you know, it's it has one a lot going for yet. it. It has a lot going for it. I, that's one that I feel pretty confident will make the list. So we can put that there. After that, okay. let me throw some things at you. Yeah. Gladiator 2. I mean, no one would be happier than us. I, yes, we'll get to that very briefly. Okay. But, um, but I haven't seen it. I haven't you seen know, it. and Ridley is just is Ridleying. He's been Ridleying quite some time. Have you seen the Napoleon director's <laughs> I, cut yet? No, because apparently it's only 46 minutes of additional footage and everyone's just like, this was boring. Oh, see, I, I saw I saw the exact opposite. Oh, really? I saw the, the Ridley heads were like, once again, Ridley has shown the studios that they do not see his vision yeah, and that they yeah, have but, disrespected but his greatness. But that's because you didn't mute all of the people being like, the brutalist, a searing yeah. vision <laughs> of American, immig- you know. Like, you haven't seen it. You can't tell me it's not. I, if I have to hear one more thing about those fucking 70 millimeter canisters being rolled through Venice to get I, there on time. I'm thinking strongly. Get me the fuck out of here. Sight unseen, solo brutalist pod. Just me I mean, it does for two hours apt, right? talking about the brutalist. The Vox Lux guy remade the Fountainhead? Oh my God, <laughs> help me. Like, America is in trouble. You're talking about Brady Corbett. This, was the, this has been the most acclaimed movie out of Venice. Now, yeah, I, but listen, it's been acclaimed by like, like I said, like a bunch of guys just you know with something I've seen at some Venice women's Twitter writing accounts films, just being reviews. like, Adrian Brody is a master, yeah. and this was a, yeah, I mean, just like pure crazy Twitter voice, <laughs> and so I muted all of them, and then I guess that means that I didn't. You uh, can't mute me, not in this format. That's true, but you haven't seen it yet. I haven't. Um, it got a ten minute ovation. 
But I, like, but like, I think that's, the Almodovar movie got a 17 minute standing ovation just because it's Almodovar yeah. and Tilda Swinton and it got very mixed reviews. Julianne Moore and everyone was like, I don't what, know what's going on here. Yeah, so yeah, that was disappointing. I mean, that's a movie that a month ago I would have said is definitely going to be on the best picture list. Yeah, Almodovar doing a English language movie with Tilda Swinton and right. Julianne Moore, and it got very very mixed reviews. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. Movies don't have to get great reviews to get nominated for Best Picture, so it's still plausible to me that that could compete, but I, we haven't seen that movie either. Right. Other potential Best Picture contenders. I think The Piano Lesson is worth considering. It got, like, warm but not outrageous reviews at Telluride, but there's a lot of pieces there that yeah. make sense. Um, I think it's possible. Well, okay, Conclave, I think, has the kind of okay. crowd-pleasery but serious thing that feels very old school well, you academy. you said it was really silly. You said it was just, but th- did the two popes I, get nominated I, for Best Picture? I believe it did. They, it did. Right. Um, I also think it's impossible to discuss this without the twist. Okay. I mean, it is also like silly things dressed up in like fancy clothes get nominated all the time. And and I often enjoy it. So I'm not saying that in a negative way. And a tremendously prestigious cast. Yeah. And both Fines and Stanley Tucci are excellent in the movie. Okay. So that alone could elevate it up. So I'll just say... And the Academy does have an Ed, a Edward Berger thing. They, Yeah, I mean, obviously he's been there before. So I'll, I'll write down Conclave. I'll write down Gladiator 2. Do you want to write down The Brutalist? I, I To I, me, I, my gut is it's going to be too arty. Yeah. I could be wrong. I'm going to write down The Piano Lesson, even though, you know... That, oh, no, I think Piano Lesson, that's a good one. Okay. I haven't seen it yet, but... So that gives us two, four, six, eight films. Okay. Two Popes, it has to be two popes by the way, was not nominated for Best Picture, but it was nominated for Adapted Screenplay, as well as okay, Actor and Supporting okay. Actor. Thank you. It, so Hopkins and Price were nominated? Yes. Both Popes. Interesting, okay. Two for two on the Popes. Those, those, those two Popes. Yeah. I think that was the original title, was those two, or Dem Two Popes. <laughs> um, Damn, comma, two Popes. <laughs> uh, well, that could have been the title of Conclave, too. Uh, Saturday Night. Sure, put it in. I don't know. I haven't seen it's it. It's a soft year. Yeah. It's a soft year. They loved Juno, you know? They did. They did love Juno. <laughs> they love they love a docudrama. Yeah. They love a recreation. Yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody was nominated for Best Picture. No, you, I know. I mean, that's why I'm like, should we be talking about a complete unknown? That was going to be my next. Okay. So I'm just going to, let's write down 13 or 14 okay, and then just if we, say this if, is what we're working okay, from. I'll put challengers on. Okay. I was going to get there. I, okay. I had intention of getting there. So you said a complete unknown. I think you're right. Yeah. We don't know. It's not playing any festivals. Uh, but it's coming out of Christmas and you'll see it with your dad and it'll just be like, wow, Bob Dylan. Can I, tell- I won't see it with my dad, but you right. may see it with your dad. Right. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that would be fun. I mean, I'll probably see it with you and you'll just be like crying and really angry and I'll be like, it's okay. Okay. Um, Thanks for The other night me. I walked into Zach's office. He's been like rearranging stuff mm-hmm. in advance of the baby. You make it sound like he's the star of the Fountainhead. Um, and he was just like alphabetizing books and blasting Dylan at like eight forty five on a Saturday night, guy. and I was like, "This is some real That's dad my, shit." My like, this is yeah. you've, what you've era, reached you the remember? next level. No, I don't. Okay. I was just kind of like, "Lol." Shame okay. On you. Shame on you. And then I tried to give him his space. You know, we all we all have our ways of coping. Yeah, he's about to be a father of two. That sounds very challenging. Yeah. Uh, how about Blitz? Steve McQueen's new movie that right. is not premiering in any of the signature festivals. It is premiering at the London Film Festival. It's like, do you understand what it's about? I do, but if you talk to anybody in the business, they're, like, they're like, this is, this is that's not, nothing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They but were then like, it's that's doing, a, then it's doing New York. It is doing New York. I think it's the, is it the closing night film in New York? Or the, op- the opening night film is Nickel Boys. Mm-hmm. I think the centerpiece is The Room Next Door and the closing night film is Blitz. Okay. I am going to the New York Film Festival as well. Very excited. Well, bully for you. Yeah. Where will you be? I will be on my couch. Okay. It's tough. Um, I'm going to write Blitz down even though I don't believe in it. Okay. But I haven't seen it, so it's a pointless statement. Anything else? Challengers. So You know, I went on Katie Rich's podcast last week, and I said mm -hmm. this. This was my big... She was like, what's your big theory with award season? Yeah. And I said, I'm not counting Challengers out. And the reason why I'm not is because three of the last five guests on the show, directors, Mm Mm-hmm. When I've said, what's the last great thing that, that you've seen? They've said Challengers. Yeah. Everybody that I know likes Challengers. Now that we get through the year, it's kind of like maybe with Saturday night at the festival where I was like, when I look back, I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. I think people are going to look back on the year in movies and I'm like, Challengers, auteur film, energetic and exciting, young movie stars, fun script, good right. music. 
this is a good movie. And I I think there's a a weirdly good chance that it might it, it assuming Amazon pushes it correctly and gets it back in front of people that it could get nominated. You agree? I do. I think also obviously Luca Guadagnino had queer I think it premiered like tonight, today. you know, today, today like while we were recording. Um but that campaign is very much on and so when Luca is out front and center, I think it, you know, it all his children will come together. I haven't seen queer, but I have been told by many people that it's deeply strange and that it is more Suspiria Luca. Okay. With you know, but that it is. But you can also see. Call if, me by your name. If if Daniel Craig is campaigning, mm-hmm. then he's out there. He's already in the new Loewe Fall ads, which mm-hmm. is the Jonathan Anderson brand, who also did all the costumes for Challengers. Yep. So I, I'm just like, they're all going to be back out front and center. Mm-hmm. Um, Jonathan Anderson was at the premiere. They look like they're having a great time. Rachel Weiss looks great. You know. Um, Daniel Craig has long hair now. I don't know how I, I saw feel that. About it. It's he's sort of doing that. the Tom Cruise thing, but I saw that. Um, so I think that there is like a lot of room for like the Luca awareness to come back in the later half of the year, which is a, a important part of I, nominations is I being in people, people's minds. A twenty four picked up Queer. Yeah, they're obviously. I don't think that film has a release date yet. No, I think it actually helps challengers that Queer is a little bit more challenging. Yes, right. Um, I'm putting the brutalist on the end of this list. Okay. When's that coming out? It does not have a distributor, so it may not even come out this year. Okay. When you look down at the list of potential distributors, Netflix just picked up Maria. A24 just picked up Queer. I mean, both, are, got both are likely places for them to be. Yes, you know, they, they are. And Searchlight mm-hmm. has got a Complete Unknown. Yeah. Um, Focus has got Conclave and Nosferatu. All of the Likely homes for a movie like that are kind of filled. Maybe there's a Sony Pictures Classics potential there. Oh, but they, Neon, they have the right. room next door. Neon's got a Nora. So. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, seem, it seems like Neon in a next year release, right? That feels like the right home for it. Yeah. Um, just based on what we've read and we, don't, we haven't seen it. But I don't know if it's going to get in or not this year. We'll see. Okay. Um, am I forgetting anything? I'm sure you are, but I can't think of it right now. Oh, Joker Fully Ado. Oh, sure. Which right. is still Lady not Ga- premiered. Right. Lady Gaga is in Venice. She landed. Great. Where's she, Joaquin? They're, they're also there. But she, I mean, she showed up with an engagement ring that like the size of... Who's she engaged to? Uh, the guy she's been dating for four years. This was confirmed by the French prime minister during the Olympics. Keep up. The um, French prime minister confirmed that Lady Gaga is engaged to who? To some guy. But like of no note, just no, like a guy like, from he's like Sheboygan, a Wisconsin. Or or something? Or something? I don't know. A manager? I don't know what he's doing. Like a manager of artists or like a manager of a baseball team? No, like a manager of artists. Okay. Though a baseball team would be more fun. I, Lady Gaga is deserving in love. Of course, I. Agree I with didn't that. know that the guy from industry is in Jolie Joker Folia de. Which guy from industry? Um, Rob. Oh, Harry, Harry Lottie. Lottie. Yeah. Harry Lottie, a.k.a. British Trey Turner. Uh, I have not seen last night's episode of Industry or two nights ago. Do not spoil yeah. it for me. Okay. Uh, I sat with someone throughout the festival who, a journalist who binged the entire third season and said mm-hmm. it's the best season of TV he's seen in like five years. I have a good friend who also binged the entire third season and is very into it. I can't believe you just went past British Trey Turner with like absolutely no. Can you see it? It's like, it's really, really apt. Uh, I don't, we don't recognize Trey Turner well, on this podcast. Well, you did this weekend. Uh, I didn't watch any of the games. Okay. Did he play well? Uh, I think he played okay. Trey Turner, shortstop for the Philadelphia Phillies. Sure. Significantly the second best shortstop in the National League East after Francisco Lindor. R- oh, M- is he, R- he's a shortstop? He has a shortstop. Okay. He's the shortstop in baseball. In I opinion. knew about him because you guys say his name a lot, but I didn't know he was a shortstop. Let me, let me just be clear about this. He's the fucking man. Okay. He's so good that's great and it's wonderful what's happened where he has become fully embraced this year by New York and he deserves Mm -hmm. it I love him let me throw something at you okay Wicked Part 1 I thought about it it's not insane it's a Part 1 I just don't see a Part 1 getting nominated those two women are working so hard and I like I respect it and they just and they have to wear like crowns everywhere they they go they all everybody needs that movie to be successful yeah I know but I just you mean I, Cynthia Revo and Ariana Grande? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
I just don't care. Like, I just don't care I, about like, that movie. I couldn't care less. And I guess I ha- will have to see part one at some point in order to Maybe you cover won't. part two. I don't know. Maybe you won't. You think they won't make part two? No, I think they. I think it's probably made already. Um. So then, probably I would well. Juliet's going to come on the pod to talk about part no, I, one. I know. I mean, so you know, maybe like, she just comes on part every two every year. Like I, well, not every year. Every baby, I have like one. <laughs> is it a mulligan where I'm just like, oh, I missed well, that. What one. What was the first one? It was the Northmen. Oh. And so I was thinking, but I I'm going to see Nosferatu because okay. of awards and stuff, yeah. and I'm coming back so soon. But maybe Wicked Part One is my mulligan. Uh. Well, tell you what, if you want it to be and you don't want to have to see part no, two, I or you I could see it. part I, two without I think seeing I want part it to one. Be night, bitch, respectfully. <laughs> That's just really not my. You're really going to be mad when you watch the trailer. I'm not going to watch the trailer. Okay. Right. That's the thing. That's my black licorice. I have never liked a Mariel Heller film. I've. You hate Amy Adams. I don't You've hate said many her. times you think she's an absolute fraud. But I am uh, with her, okay. uh, with Bill on my feelings. You're about with her, her Hillary Clinton? <laughs> God. No, Hillary no. Clinton was in Telluride. Why? There with the, with the documentary called Zorowski versus Texas about the people who are suing the state of Texas for abortion rights. Okay. Well, you know what? Important that's film. doing something. Important okay, film. Okay. So that's, I mean, I didn't that's see that fine. film. Actually, one right, of the most you. crowded. So you and Jason Reitman leading the women's rights movement. Uh, <laughs> well, I did see Andrea Arnold's Bird. Okay. Also about a young woman. Yeah. Uh, at the same time that Zorowski for oh. sex. I didn't love Bird, unfortunately, for okay. me. Um, did you see the Swim to Bill documentary? I didn't. I did see Swim to Bill. He oh. was he was a sighting. Okay. Um, he was very present. Swim to Bill, legendary swimming teacher here in Los Angeles, yes. often employed by the modestly elite of LA mm-hmm. to teach three year olds how to swim in pools. Or the very elite. Or the very elite, such as Rashida Jones, who I believe her swim teacher was Swim to Bill. Yes. And she made a short documentary about him that was playing here. That was a very funny um, Instagram photo that she had where she said the two most important bills in my life and it was Swim to Bill and Bill Murray in the image. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah, I didn't see I didn't okay. see the Swim to Bill movie. All right. Um, I got to tell you, at the pool this weekend, I met the most incredible. I met like two, two-year-old Michael Phelps. Oh, really? And I don't think he was a Swim to Bill graduate. It was just like a kid doing the worm in the pool and Whoa. he was like two years old. Oh my God, he was amazing. I loved him so much. Wow. So that was the that's scene. That's intimidating. That's the scene from, no, it was great. It was joyful. Okay, great. So that was, the, that's the pool report. That's nice. For this week. I missed out. Let's just recap this quickly. Okay. I think we have between 15 and 16 here. Dune part two. Enora. Sing Sing. Emilia Perez. Conclave. Gladiator two. The Piano Lesson. Saturday Night. A Complete Unknown, Blitz, Challengers, The Brutalist, Joker Folly Ado, Wicked Part One, and I've added Nosferatu to the end of the list, even yeah. though I think that's an outside likelihood. I think, I, as always, I think this list is too American, and there will be some stuff, Great you point. know, that you, you know, in your blinkered way, you skipped all the international films. I if, did. Had I been at Venice, the films that had ha- I been able to fulfill my role as the citizen of the world, then I would be able to report. Whose fault is that? This fucking baby. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Take it up with him. Um, the two, the two movies I've heard the most about that could fill that slot, that international slot, are all we imagine is light, which may or may not be India's submission, mm-hmm. and the seat of the sacred fig, which I don't want to get this wrong. I want to say it's Germ- potentially Germany's submission. That sounds right. Um, those films seem to have the most buzz coming out of. The festivals, they both played Cannes as well, but I haven't seen either one of them. Another movie that I, two, two other movies I didn't see quickly, Memoir of a Snail, which is an animated movie by Adam, Adam Elliott, which got rave reviews. Um, I don't think that's a best picture movie, but seemed to be liked. I didn't see Better Man. I was warned off of Better Man. This is the Robbie Williams biopic. Oh, sad. Yeah. It, it, unfortunately, it always conflicted with something else that I was already okay. committed to seeing. I saw some wild reviews in many directions that some people despised it. Some people really liked it. It's from Michael Gracie, the director of The Greatest Showman. You know Robbie Williams is represented in the film as a CGI monkey, right? No. That's true. Okay. (laughs) What am I supposed to do with that? I'm waiting for you to respond. (laughs) Take your time. I'll wait. It's like, I do actually need a documentary explaining Robbie Williams to me, an American, you know, because it's a very insular British thing. Yes. Obviously, like, I know him a little, you know, do, 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 yes. do, but I, why is he a CGI monkey? What about Take That's I Want You Back? I mean, I do, I like Take song. That, but I remember I once watched a clip of Graham Norton on Graham Norton of another Take That member who, like, I, I 
can't name. I don't okay. know who it is. Yeah. Talking about how COVID Jim Johnson COVID changed his life because he could finally like go to the grocery store and not be mobbed. And I was like, "Sir, you could be my next door neighbor. You know, <laughs> like just come here." Well, so it's a certain it's a stripe of Anglophilia. I know, you know exactly. Yeah. So I would like a normal documentary. I don't know why we need to bring CGI into it. Um, I I'm gonna see that movie. It's a Paramount movie. It's a bit curious to me that Paramount is opening that movie wide in America when nobody knows who Rob, Robbie Williams is. But yeah. some people really seem to really like its oddity and creativity. <sighs> Let's talk about the most anticipated films. Okay. So you've put one on here that you've already seen. Yeah, but that was you want to just, just represent it for the people. Yes. Okay. Because I thought okay. it was like unfair to this movie to lord it over people. No, 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 no. But. It wouldn't be reflective of the state of see, the of the fall okay. if we didn't mention it one way or but another. But you're not anticipating the film Saturday night? <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm just going to see it. Okay. Maybe that's, the, you know, I don't have high expectations. I don't have low expectations. Okay. I'm just going to go have a time at the movies. What's your fifth most anticipated movie of the fall? It's queer uh, because I'm a fan of Luca Guadagnino and Daniel Craig. Okay. And sex in all its forms. So. A fan of all those things yeah, as well. There we uh, go. My number five is a little movie called Juror Number Two, directed by perhaps you've heard of him, Clint Eastwood. Uh, sounds like this movie is coming out. Great. Uh, I'm not quite sure the ways in which it will be platformed by Warner Brothers, the Warner Brothers Corporation, where Clint Eastwood has been making movies sure. for six decades. But um, it's a courtroom drama thriller starring Nicholas Holt. It's more or less all we know. <laughs> and can I mean, just, can you imagine the crazy Clint Eastwood pod I'm going to do when this movie comes out? I, it sounds like it could be anywhere between November and January for when it comes out. Okay. But I think it's going to come out this fall. Remember when we saw The Mule together? P- fucking rocked. And Bradley Cooper just showed up for... Yeah, as like <laughs> FBI guy number two. Man, that's a good Great. movie. My number four, I don't care what you say, Blitz. Um, <laughs> I have respect for Steve McQueen and Saoirse Ronan. Nice. and. Harris Dickinson. Mm-hmm. I, I've heard that those two play very supporting roles. I mean, listen, I think, do you know how the Blitz went? I think everybody played a supporting role. Who would you say is the to, lead? Like the bombs. Adolf but, Hitler? You know, or, I mean, okay. I don't know. It's right. just, it's, it wasn't great, okay? So you can't count on anyone. <laughs> Understood. Uh, I'm looking forward to Blitz too. I, you know, I'm not going to write yeah, off yeah, Stephen yeah, yeah, one of my yeah. favorite directors. I, I'm, still, I'm still choosing to believe in The Room Next Door. I'm, I'm looking forward. Okay. My number four is uh, Almodovar's new film, even though it seems like the transition from uh, Spanish to English has caused some issues. The the short film that I saw at Telluride last year with Pedro Pascal and Ethan Hawke was not his best work. And this film's getting mixed oh, reviews, yeah. but I love, love, but love it. It was still very beautiful and stylish. It was. It looks great. His movies always look great. A lot of flair. Uh, what's next for you? Baby girl. Let's go Harris Dickinson. Yeah. Are you kidding? You know, like... You did, uh, I did feel seen and supported by you because you just started sending me pictures. Like, no commentary. You would just send me pictures of Harris Dickinson from the Venice red carpet, where, let's be clear, he was on one. Would he have a mustache? I don't, I mean, do you call it a mustache? Do you like a like mustache? A Not really, but okay. I. But sometimes I don't mind it. Do you think I should grow a mustache? No, I don't. Why? Because um, I would just look like a cop? Well, it would be sort of gray, right? So that's no, sad. No, the mustache is the only thing that's not gray. It's not? What yeah. color is it? It's brown, like my hair. Okay. No, I don't I don't think that you should. But okay. also, like... It's not very supportive. I think that's not a good decision for you. Okay. And I think it was a good decision for Tom Selleck. You know what I'm saying? So... Well, I can't argue with that. This is literally <laughs> the greatest mustache since sure, Wyatt Earp. it's just like we have to be, <laughs> we have to be case specific. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. What the fuck is that? That's no way to live. Yeah. But Harris Dickinson is doing more of like you either a, be Einstein or an idiot. It's more like I both like haven't showered in a week and I'm like impeccably groomed, you mm-hmm. know, yeah. which is like a sure. very special. What do you think look. he smells like? Um, I I don't really think that this is an appropriate conversation you think he has a to have musk on the podcast about him? at some point. But I just let like me the bark say of a tree. Let me say once again that I I called my shot on this early, mm-hmm. and now everyone is like, oh do you know about Harris Dickinson? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I do. How much money will you be paid for that shot called? It's not that. I just want him to be respected. I want him to be in GQ. Okay. My husband's not listening. Everyone else. You know what I was wondering about? This is really- Do tell. <laughs> it's just us here. Do you think that our spouses <laughs> listen to this podcast more or less than Taylor Swift listens to Travis Kelsey's podcast? Oh my god! <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I know for a fact yeah. that Eileen is pretty out of the rotation on the big okay. picture. So I think there's a, I think it's more than likely okay. that Taylor listens to Travis's pod more than Eileen listens to this show. Okay. But I don't think that's a judgment on us. I just think she's not caught up on movies at all at this stage of her life. Sure. And also maybe secretly harbors a tremendous hatred for me. And also is like gets this, you know. She gets it. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I'm literally on the phone with her from Telluride. And I'm like, and then I saw this movie. And then I saw this movie. She's like, all right, God damn it. It's been 25 years of this. When I start, when I, when we're with other people Mm -hmm. and I start like, you know, trying to be social and make jokes, I can see like this look of fatigue of Zach's face. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, I know. You know, you you see this. Zach said, I asked Zach this last Mm -hmm. night. Okay. And he was like, I think I'm probably even. But then he pointed out that Travis and uh, Jason Kelsey don't publish as often, so Taylor has the advantage. Oh. We're we're talking like a pure minutes perspective? I don't know. I think it's really just who's the better podcast spouse, you know? Um, We're not married. And is it— And you and I are married. I have my (laughs) 15-year wedding anniversary this month. that's really crazy. 15 years. Yeah. Happy anniversary. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. I love being married. Um— I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Baby Girl, also Nicole Kidman rules. Yeah, I left this for you, but this would also be on my yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, yeah. really liked um, both of Helena Ryan's movies, um, Bodies, 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 and Instinct. And I've been told this is much more like Instinct, her first okay. film, oh, uh, in terms of tone. Okay. And people, I think people like that movie yeah. more. Uh, my number three is Nosferatu. We've already talked about it. Sure, Robert Eggers yeah. is Christmas release adaptation of the legendary it's vampire like, it's story. It's beautiful that there are things that are made for you in this world. You know, this is probably number one now on my list you for the rest of the year. It. Um, and complete unknown is the most terrifying. Except for movie the, of the year. literally the list that you made that we're looking at, where you put something else at number one. Yeah, but it's just for fun. Okay, my number two is the aforementioned Nora, which I've seen. Yep. which I loved. Yep. Uh, I'm excited for other people to be able to see it. Me as well. My number two is the Brutalist. I have no idea if it's coming out, but I saw the tweets, and I was like, absolutely. You're saying to me that this is a film about an immigrant coming to this country, but it's like there will be blood. And it's about America and pain and struggle and and success and architecture and love. And devastation, and the the, the awfulness do, and the greatness say, of this really, world. I do like Adrian Brody. I'm really Adrian Brody, Guy Pierce, Felicity Jones. I like two th- out of those three people. How dare you blaspheme Felicity? Very Jones. much. I mean, name a movie where she has a pulse. <laughs> <laughs> She's in a very good. Um. Oh shit! What's that movie called? I'm gonna look this up. Yeah, this is not good podcasting. We're almost done here, guys. I'm sorry. Felicity I would argue Jones. that this is this is where the real magic happens. Well, she's in Rogue One. Oh yeah, that's good, and she's like good in that. that. I like her in but like she, I like her in the movie Like Crazy. That's the movie I was thinking. But of. But she's the one in Rogue One who just has to like look confused but determined the whole time, you know? Yeah, but in a steely way. Uh it's not that steely. I can't say I'm a fan of the theory of everything or on the basis of sex or the aeronauts. None of those movies are interesting. What to me. was the George Clooney movie? I don't remember. She's in a George Clooney movie? Yeah, that he directed for Netflix and it's like about space. Oh, yeah. Uh, that movie is called The Midnight Sky. Yeah. Which wasn't very good. Okay. Mm, what else? No, not a lot of good movies. Okay. The Brutalist I'm, is, I, I've I, chosen to believe. I'm, I know that Have I, you seen The Childhood of a Leader, Brady Corbett's first movie? No. Robert but, Pattinson? But I hated Vox Lux. I know. I didn't like it either. With such a passion. And 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 what I hated about it was... It's ostentatiousness. The fake intellectualism. Yeah. I was like, this yeah. is a movie that a person who doesn't get it, but thinks he really gets it, is making. And so that doesn't bode well for a three and a half hour movie uh, in res- that is responding to the fountainhead. You know what Shot I'm saying? Shot in VistaVision. Projected in 70 millimeter. I mean, I just like clip after clip. There's an intermission. People, and I recognize the hallway that they're opening the door, you know, and and there go the canisters. Enough with the canisters. I like preserve film, shoot on film. I think it's great. Just talk about it less, you know? Okay. Do more, say less. Are you saying this to me or to Brady? Or sometimes you're like a little. Just do more, say less. That's what I have to say. There's nothing wrong with canisters, (laughs) not inherently, anyway. What's our number one? Gladiator 2. Let's go. You know? It's got to be good. I need it to be good. Yeah. I need it to be good. I mean, I will have a great time no matter what, but I too would like it to be good instead of bad. That's yes. that's sort of my philosophy about going to the movies. I'm getting in- increasingly excited about Denzel Washington in the film. Increasingly? Yeah. I'm, a li- I'm still a little worried 
that they put his whole performance in the trailer and that he's in 10 minutes of the movie. I mean, I'm hoping he's actually like a best actor contender. Okay. Like I Great. really hope Me that that's too. the case. That would be really fun. We'll see. And then all three of them are campaigning together for their various categories. That, that would be lovely. That would, yeah, the, the family. The family. Yeah. yeah, that would be nice. Any other thoughts? I like movies. You have a conclave as an honorable mention. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm really looking forward to it. It sounds preposterous, but in the best way. What about Here, the Robert Zemeckis film starring so Tom Hanks? Recently, I, what did we see the trailer before? Was it before Trap? Trap? Yeah. Speaking of. Um, did you show off your shirt? Oh, yeah, my shirt. So I ordered this because I needed new shirts because nothing else fits. Um, I think I was like in the waiting room at the doctor. For those of you listening at home, you're wearing a Josh Hartnett shirt. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like one of the meme shirts, but yeah, it's like for a, Josh it's Hartnett. It's like a cash money t-shirt, yeah, yeah, but, this, but for Josh yeah. Hartnett. Um, oh, okay. They're telling me to put the, the computer down and then you can see it. You can also That's directing. see my giant. Um, but it, actually, the sizing worked out quite well for this phase sure of my life. Sure looks great. Um, everyone who didn't like Trap is just we don't see eye to eye but and we don't have the same what about the film here so we saw the trailer and you turned to me and you were like this is gonna work I think so it it could work I think it's it gonna might work. also be that the trailer really works and then the movie doesn't work I'm watching the trailer with you yeah you're in this state <laughs> this, this I'm state. watching it I'm really about, is a state at this point I'm about to watch the girl dad movie of all time and this trailer hits, and yes, as I've seen all good people is playing, and they're going mm-hmm. through the course of the life of Tom Hanks and Robin Wright Penn. They have a fucking daughter. Yeah. You can tell they have a daughter, and he's laying on the ground in the living room where the entire film is set reading to his daughter. And I'm like, this, this will be a, a good film. I mean, this will be. No one believes this will in the touch my heart. No one believes in the power of Tom Hanks more than me, as you know. Well, and like, and this specific saccharine shit that you're just like, well, but it worked. Robert Zemeckis has made two movies. With Tom Hanks. Those movies are what? Forrest Gump. Yes. Castaway. Cast away. <sighs> yeah, but what are the what are the last five movies that Robert Zemeckis has made? Let me see if I can do this off the top of my head. Pinocchio. Abominable. Was that the one where he was a fascist? Uh yes, that's correct. Okay. The Witches. No, that was Guillermo Del Toro's. Ciao, oh, you're right. Papa. You're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. That was too, yeah. No, 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 he wasn't a fascist. He was just a, a just a marionette. Um, Pinocchio, The Witches. Oh uh, yeah, starring Anne Hathaway. Yeah. Mm, it was, was Welcome to Marwin the previous film to that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to Marwin, and then, God, what was before that? I don't even know. It's not Beowulf for the Polar Express, but is there another motion capture film that was before that? Jack, can you help me out? Oh my God, Allied. Allied. Whoa. Brad Pitt, Marion Cotillard movie that I was does not exist. so bad. And what's before that? That's got to be, is Beowulf before that? Oh, The Walk, I think is okay. I think The Walk's kind of cool. That's Joseph Gordon-Levitt and the recreation from the documentary about the French um, balance beam across the yeah, tw- Twin Towers. Okay. You didn't like that movie? It's a, it's a little theater kid for me. It's not you know? as good as the doc. Um, I'm just, I'm still stuck on Alan, Allied, which was, was like tough. a World War II spy movie starring Brad Pitt and Marion Cotillard. Very in your, in, your, in your zone and it didn't it was, work. It was quite bad. Yeah. Um, Welcome to Marwin, a world historical failure that I find fascinating. Also an adaptation of a documentary. Yeah. I also don't know if I can take Robert Zemeckis seriously after and I've said this before, but that joke in the um, Charlie Kaufman movie. Yeah. It was yeah. just kind of... You nailed that him was, to the wall. That yeah. was a career ender. Yeah. That was but very it good. could still work. And I'm thinking of ending things. There's a yes. fake Robert Zemeckis movie. That's what you're referring to. Yeah. And it is very funny. Um, okay. I, I I think that's all the movies. I think that's everything from the so, festival. So you, you returned renewed and excited? No, I feel horrible. Oh, okay. I saw five movies a day for four days straight, and then I got on a plane, got home at 10 o'clock, and then got my daughter at 6.30 in the morning. I mean, it's this is a crazy life we're leading. Yeah. Uh, but I'm very lucky also. Yeah. So okay. I have gratitude, and also I'm in pain. Okay. Which is the story of my life. Do you get any time off, or just like straight back From to the— when? When am I going to take time off? We're, we're entering the Thunderdome. <laughs> it's award season, Amanda. I know. Trust me, I know. I've, I've got plans. I've, I've got movies to see as well. Mm, you do. Like yeah, the substance. <laughs> no, I was going to say, it's a big week for us. First day of school and Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. 
It's all it's all happening. Highs and lows. What will be the high and what will be the low? <laughs> Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice in a three minute ovation at Venice. Not ideal. That that is like just like spitting in someone's face. A little more muted than I was hoping the reaction would be to yeah. that movie. Nevertheless, that is what we'll be talking about later this week. We're talking about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We won't say it three times. Tim Burton, Van's going to join us to talk about the movie. Thanks to Alea Zanaris. Thanks to Jack Sanders. Thanks to our producer, Bobby Wagner, for his work on this episode. Thank you to everyone at Telluride, who was thank nice you, to Sean. Thank you very much yeah. to the people at Telluride, especially the people who go to the festival and care about movies. That you, you guys are the best, and I appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the show. We'll see you later this week. Thank you.